Welcome to Storytime with Sugar. Today we're reading Moose on the Loose. One summer day in the town of Zam, Mr. Lunt, the zookeeper, ran along Wheat Street, waving his arms in the air. In front of the church, he saw Mr. Perch, who ran the railroad. Have you seen my moose? cried Mr. Lunt. No, said Mr. Perch. She's not in the barn? I've looked in the barn, in the yard, and all over the zoo, replied Mr. Lunt. My moose is missing. That's not all that's missing, moaned Mr. Perch, shaking his head. A caboose is missing from my train. Which caboose, Mr. Lunt asked. The chartreuse caboose, said Mr. Perch. It has disappeared. Mr. Lunt looked at Mr. Perch. Do you think my moose is loose in your chartreuse caboose, he asked. We must search, said Mr. Perch, nodding thoughtfully. Time to hunt, agreed Mr. Lunt. They found Miss Cook reading a book. Have you seen a moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose, they asked. Miss Cook stopped reading and looked up. I saw a pig wearing a wig, she answered, but no moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose. Mr. Lunt and Mr. Fr Perch frowned. I'll help you look, said Miss Cook, and she closed her book. Mr. Wu was tying his shoe. Have you seen a moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose, they asked. Mr. Wu looked thoughtful. I saw a weasel paint at an easel, he said, but no moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose. We must keep looking, Mr. Lunt sighed. I'll help too, said Mr. Wu. That's what I'll do. They saw Mr. Black, who was pounding a tack. Have you seen a moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose, they asked. Mr. Black put down his hammer and scratched his head. I saw a bear sit in a chair, he replied, but no moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose. How will we ever find them, cried Mr. Perch. I can track. I have the knack, said Mr. Black, and he joined the search. Dr. Kell was filling a pail. Have you seen a moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose, they asked. Dr. Kell stopped what she was doing. I saw a goat sailing a boat, she replied, but no moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose. The others looked very disappointed. We'll find the trail, said Dr. Kell, leaving her pail. They met Captain DeFleur, who was opening his door. Have you seen a moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose, they asked. Captain DeFleur paused. I saw a fish making a wish, he said, but no moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose. Oh, no, groaned Mr. Lunt. You need one more to help explore, cried Captain DeFleur, and he closed his door to join the hunt. Mrs. Case was running a race. Have you seen a moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose, they called to her. Mrs. Case thought as she ran. I saw a skunk filling a trunk, she shouted, but no moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose. That was not the answer Mr. Perch wanted to hear. Have you any trace? asked Miss Case, slowing her pace. They shook their hands, and Mrs. Case stopped running and joined the search. They spied Miss McPeak, who was fixing a leak. Have you seen a moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose? they asked. Miss McPeak put down her wrench. I saw a frog out for a jog, she said, but no moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose. The searcher sighed with disappointment. I'll help you seek, said Miss McPeak. Professor Hugh had nothing to do. Have you seen a moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose? They inquired as they passed by. I saw a fox collecting rocks, he answered, but no moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose. We'll keep looking, said the others. A moose to pursue. I'd like something to do, thought Professor Hugh, who quickly joined them. They hunted first in one direction and then in another, up streets and down, around corners and under stairs. But they did not find a moose on the loose in a chartreuse caboose. Hot, thirsty, and tired of searching, they all sat down on a bench in the park. The track, shouted Mr. Black suddenly. At first, no one paid attention. The tracks, Mr. Black repeated. Let him speak, urged Miss McPeak. The caboose runs on tracks, explained Mr. Black. We must follow the railroad tracks. That's the clue, cried Professor Hugh. His plan can't fail, said Dr. Kell. I think so, too, agreed Mr. Wee. Up they all jumped and ran to the spot where the railroad tracks crossed Fleet Street. They followed the tracks in the direction that led away from the railroad yard. At the very end of the line sat the chartreuse caboose. Good advice we took, laughed Miss Cook. Inside the caboose was Miss Lunt's moose, who was serving juice to her friend the goose. Hello, would you like to join us? asked the moose. They all squeezed into the little caboose. The moose poured juice for everyone, and the goose passed a plate of oatmeal cookies. How did your 
Caboose, get here, Mr. Perch, Dr. Kale wondered aloud. It has no engine. It can't run by itself. That is true, added Mr. Wu. Mr. Perch sipped his juice and said, I don't know how my caboose came to be here with Mr. Lunt's moose. I'm as puzzled as you are. Does anyone know? I do, cried Professor McHugh. Why this place? asked Mrs. Case. The tracks run downhill, explained Professor Hugh. I think Mr. Lunt's moose, when she got loose, released the brake in the chartreuse caboose. Downhill it raced at a very fast pace until it stopped in this space. It must have flown through the town past the school and the church, stopping here with a bump and a lurch, guessed Mr. Perch. Quite a stunt, said Mr. Lunt. But your moose is safe, said Mrs. Case. The caboose, too, added Mr. Wu. A happy ending to our church search, said Mr. Perch. Are we all done? I had such fun. Isn't there more for us to do? asked Professor Hugh. Please wait right here, Mr. Perch said. I'll send for the engine that runs on the track and use it to pull the caboose right back. Then what we'll do is ride to the zoo. A special zoo run. That will be fun, everyone shouted. Invite them too, said Professor Who. Invite who? asked Mr. Wu. Take a look, replied Miss Cook. That pig in a wig wants to join in. That weasel with the easel agreed, Mr. Wu can't wait to pursue a trip to the zoo. There's the bear in a chair. Let's not hold him back, urged Mr. Black. Take the goat on his boat, said Dr. Kell, who admired the way the goat could sail. That fish with a wish, declared Captain DeFleur, doesn't want to be left on the shore. The skunk with her trunk. Let's save her a place, said Mrs. Case. The frog out for a jog, added Mrs. McPeak, would ask the goat if he could speak. The fox with his rocks, cried Professor Hugh. He too wants to go with us to the zoo. Into the caboose they all climbed, and the engine steamed away, straight to the gate at the Zoundtown Zoo. The moose, the goose, and everyone else climbed down the steps of the chartreuse caboose. This is fun, a day at the zoo, exclaimed Professor Hugh. I think so too, said Mr. Wu.